morning. The president and first lady have COVID-19. Up next, we head to Washington, D.C. for the latest on what that means. Plus, we'll have analysis of what this means for the election from our Joe St. George on Capitol Hill. In-person voting for the 2020 election begins tomorrow. I'm Gabby Krevitt, and I'll have that story coming up. We mentioned here at 630, President and First Lady have tested positive for COVID-19. President made that announcement on Twitter early this morning. CBS's Natalie Brand joins us from Washington. A senior administration official tells CBS News the president is in good spirits, but huge questions and uncertainty remain about what happens next in the president's schedule. The timing of this comes a little more than 30 days from the election. In a tweet just before 1 a.m. Eastern Time, President Trump announced both he and First Lady Melania Trump have tested positive for COVID-19. The president wrote, we will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately. We will get through this together. So uh, I just went for a test and we'll see what happens. I mean, who knows? This stunning development came hours after President Trump confirmed to Fox News that one of his closest aides, Hope Hicks, had tested positive for the coronavirus. She tested positive. And I just went out with a test. I'll see what, you know, because we spent a lot of time and the first lady just went out with a test also. So whether we quarantine or whether we have it, I, I don't know. White House physician Sean Conley released a statement saying the president and first lady were both doing well, adding, quote, rest assured, I expect the president to continue carrying out his duties without disruption while recovering. The White House has canceled all of the president's public events for today. He has kept on his schedule a phone call on COVID-19 support for vulnerable seniors. Hicks had traveled to several events with President Trump this week, including the debate on Tuesday and to his rally in Minnesota on Wednesday. President Trump attended a fundraiser in New Jersey on Thursday, reportedly spending time in close contact with a number of his supporters. The White House says contact tracing has been done, but it's unclear at this point how many White House officials or staffers could have to take new precautions in light of this. A senior aide says the White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, has tested negative. On Capitol Hill, I'm Natalie Brand. Back to you. Also, reports from various news agencies, Vice President Mike Pence and his wife Karen testing negative early this morning as well. So what does the president having COVID mean for the U.S. political scene just four weeks before the election? Our George St. George is in Washington this morning where we asked him about the implications. Uh, look, there are a lot of unknowns this morning uh, regarding the White House, the president, the first family. Uh, what is next in this campaign? And honestly, we're not going to know until we know whether or not President Trump is symptomatic or asymptomatic. Uh, if he develops symptoms that would warrant intense medical care, perhaps a hospital visit, that changes the trajectory of everything. Uh, the next presidential debate on October 15th, hard to see how that is able uh, to happen. Uh, Vice President Joe Biden was in close proximity to President Trump just a few days ago in the first presidential debate. Does this alter what their campaign is doing? Because we don't know for sure yet when the president may have contracted this virus. So uh, there is a lot of uncertainty right now for what this means in American politics. 6.33, more coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Right I didn't now? see um, the two getting too close to shake hands. No, they came in from opposite sides yeah. of the uh, stage arena there and yeah. stayed at their podiums, did not shake hands. Didn't I don't know. I, we afterwards. only see parts of Yeah. Things. Well, uh, more to follow, of course. Yeah. Matt, uh, how's the weather look as we head into the weekend? Uh, not bad. A little smoke in our skies mm -hmm. yesterday. Uh, this morning, we were at moderate in Bozeman for our air quality. It's gone mm -hmm. up to good. That's, That's positive, good. Um, but I think we're going to be right at that borderline for most of the weekend. Right now, 36 in Belgrade. Temperatures are dropping as the clouds are rolling very slowly out of our skies across western and southwestern Montana in particular. Temperatures by the afternoon into the low 70s. It's going to be a great afternoon if you want to spend some time outdoors outside of the uh, little bit of smoke that we're that we're dealing with right now. Should be pretty pleasant for most of the weekend, but little up and down. We're going to break down that up and down forecast in just a few minutes. I'll just take it easy and sit in the hammock.
Oh, that sounds all right. There we go. 635 now. Gallatin County holding a mail ballot election this year, but that does not mean you can't vote in person. MTN's Gabby Krevit with the details about how you can do that. A mail ballot election doesn't mean you can't vote in person. And starting on Friday, voters across the state of Montana can go to their elections office and fill out their 2020 ballot. This is a standard practice for all elections, whether it's an absentee polling place election or a mail ballot election. That means if you're a resident of Gallatin County, you can head to the county courthouse on Main Street as early as Friday, October 2nd, vote in person and deposit your ballot. To avoid the lines and the crowds, uh, if people can find a time uh, in the coming month to conduct their uh, voting in person. That would be appreciated by all of us who are working the election, especially those on election day. If you're signed up to receive an absentee ballot, you can still opt to vote in person. In some instances, voters will come in, that ballot is already prepared to be mailed out. So they'll have to sign an affidavit that says that they uh, wish to have the first ballot voided and then another ballot reissued, and that they will not vote the other ballot when they receive it in the mail. The election office says historically voter fraud has not been a problem in Gallatin County, but they will be keeping a sharp eye for it. Our concern uh, with this election is anyone who is going to attempt to vote more than once. A voter cannot be issued more than one ballot in the database. Uh, so when we void and reissue a ballot for somebody who appears in person, uh, we would expect and anticipate that they would not be voting that second ballot and they would sign an affidavit stating as such. And if the election office does receive a second ballot, it will go to the county attorney's office and we will uh, consider prosecution for voter fraud. And absentee ballots will be mailed out on October 9th. Reporting in Gallatin County, Gabby Krevit, MTN News. The way Gabby tells us all counties across the state of Montana can vote in person starting today. Check online to see when your county's election office opens. Well, an update now. Montana COVID-19 cases growing daily. It's been happening for a week. Yesterday, a new record, 429 new cases. Gallatin City County Health Department reporting 34 or 35 new cases. 173 are active, five people in the hospital in Gallatin County. Butte Silver Bone, no new cases, but still 52 active cases. Beaverhead County reporting eight new cases. Park County had three new, Madison County had two, Deer Lodge and Jefferson County, each reporting one new case. Since the 1st of September, 16 of Yellowstone National Park's estimated 2,000 employees have also tested positive. Eight of the 16 are well, the other eight are still in recovery. Well, the Bozeman School District facing another issue while preparing to eventually re return to five-day in-person classes, a custodial and substitute teacher shortage. Deputy Superintendent Steve Johnson says the school is operating without 10 needed custodians, while two additional are in the interview process. Johnson says the current number of available subs is well underneath the usual 60 needed to fill the substitute pool. Last year alone, that pool number fell below half. Johnson says the ongoing pandemic makes filling the spaces even more important with more custodians needed to safely clean all schools and teaching substitutes available to help when other teachers must self quarantine. It, it's just critical that we have all the all the pieces in place. Um, when we bring all of those students back, we're going to try to practice social distancing. But in order to do that, we have to have students supervised in certain areas. It just makes it uh, more difficult for us to accomplish that. Now, Johnson adds all the resources needed to apply for either role can be found on the school's website, bsd7.org. Well, we're going to take a quick break here on Montana this morning when we come back. So what happens when you mix chocolate and beer? Only good things, I guess. Well, it's a matter of taste. Coming up, find out how you can get that combination just in time for Halloween. Let's check in with our friends at CBS this morning to see what's coming up at 7. Good morning ahead on CBS this morning. The president and first lady test positive for COVID-19. We're going to discuss the health implications and how this will affect the last 32 days of the U.S. presidential campaign. Also, state and local officials are still looking for enough people to work the polls on Election Day. We'll talk about some of the hurdles of voting in the midst of this pandemic. And finally, country superstar Maren Morris released what she's calling a protest song overnight. What inspired her to write this call to action that's shaking up the country music scene. We'll get into all of it and we'll see you at 7.